Good day everyone and welcome to today's enlightening conversation about key economic concepts. I'm John, and with me is Olivia, a distinguished expert in economics. Olivia, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure, John. Economics is a fascinating field, and I'm delighted to shed some light on these essential concepts. Let's dive right in. Could you start with the concept of supply and demand and why it is at the heart of economic theory? Can you explain this concept in a bit more detail? Certainly, John, supply and demand are the twin pillars that drive economic transactions. Imagine you have a favorite chocolate bar. Now, if the store suddenly has more chocolate bars than people want to buy, what happens? Prices drop to entice more buyers. Conversely, if there's a limited supply of your favorite chocolate bar and everyone wants one, prices rise due to scarcity. It's this delicate dance between supply and demand that governs prices and markets worldwide. A great example, Olivia. Moving on to market demand, how does a business effectively gauge it, especially in those crucial early stages? Market demand is like the compass for businesses. You need to understand it to navigate successfully. Let's say you're launching a new smartphone. You could conduct customer interviews asking potential buyers what features they desire most or you might run surveys to gather quantitative data. Analyzing competitors' offerings can also help you identify gaps in the market. The goal is to ensure there's enough demand to achieve a positive return on investment. Valuable insights, Olivia. Willingness to pay is intriguing. How does it influence product features and pricing strategies? Willingness to pay is pivotal. Picture two customers. One is willing to pay more for a premium product, while the other seeks a budget option. To cater to both, companies might offer a range of product variations at different price points. For instance, think of a streaming service like Netflix. They offer different subscription tiers based on users' willingness to pay, each with varying features. That makes sense. Now to the so-called conjoint analysis. Can you share a real-world example of how businesses use this to make informed decisions? Consider Apple, a company known for innovation, Let's say they want to enhance their iPhone. Conjoint analysis would help them determine whether customers value battery life, screen size, or camera quality most. By understanding these preferences, Apple can focus their efforts on improving the feature that resonates most with their target audience. Insightful. Cognitive biases can be quite tricky. How do they impact consumer behavior, and what can businesses do to address them? Cognitive biases are fascinating, John. They influence how people make choices. For instance, confirmation bias makes us seek information that aligns with our beliefs. Businesses need to be aware of these biases and design their marketing strategies accordingly. If a customer has a particular bias, addressing it in your messaging can build trust and increase sales. Finally, let's touch on key strategies. Can you briefly explain Porter's Five Forces and how it helps businesses? Porter's Five Forces is like a strategic compass for businesses. It assesses the competitive landscape by examining five key factors. The threat of new entrants, substitutes, supplier power, buyer power, and competitive rivalry. By understanding these forces, companies can make informed decisions about entering or competing in a market. SWOT analysis and core competencies sound important too. Could you share a quick example of how a business benefits from these concepts? Certainly, John. Let's say a hotel chain performs a SWOT analysis. They identify their strengths, excellent customer service, for example, weaknesses, outdated facilities, opportunities, a nearby convention center opening, and threats, increased competition. Armed with this knowledge, they can invest in renovating their facilities to capitalize on the convention center opportunity, strengthening their competitive position. Fantastic, Olivia. These concepts truly are the foundation of economics and business success. Thank you for providing such clear and practical insights today. You're very welcome, John. It's been a pleasure discussing these pivotal economic concepts with you and our audience. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Remember, embracing these concepts can undoubtedly fortify your foundation in the world of economics and open doors to knowledge and success in your professional journey. Until next time, stay curious.